Hallelujah forevermore. So glad to see each and every one of you 
in the house of the Lord this morning. So glad for the goodness and the mercy of God and His greatness that has been extended to us today. And we are so excited that Brother Charlie is going to be bringing the word to us here in a few moments. Looking forward to hearing uh, from the Lord through Him what the Lord has laid upon His heart as I know you are. Yeah. We will go to the Lord in prayer this morning as we uh, start our service today. Asking the presence of the Lord to come into us, into our hearts, into our minds, and fill this place, fill this atmosphere with His glory. Hallelujah. My Lord God of heaven, we come to you today and we're so thankful and we're so grateful, Lord God of heaven, for all you do. Lord, you are so good to us and you bless us and you keep your hand upon us. Lord, more than that, we thank you for just who you are. Lord God of heaven, you are the creator. Not only are you the creator, that you are the sustainer. Lord of heaven, not only do you give us life, Lord, you keep us throughout this life. You keep your watchful eye upon us. And you keep your hand upon us. And Lord God, you bless us in so many ways. And we're undeserving so much, much of the time. But Lord, you love us enough to bless us anyway. And I'm asking you this day, Lord, as we come to this place, and we open our hearts, and we lift our voices, in praise and adoration. Fill this place with your glory. Fill this place with your presence, I pray. Amen. Continue to worship.
God for my salvation. Hallelujah. I'm so glad for the goodness of the Lord. I couldn't help but think yesterday uh, here I sat in a nice warm home and so many people in Ukraine were driven out of their homes in the streets to escape the bombs and the terror boom over there. And I had to weep. Yes. Yes. I thank God for his goodness to me. Yes. And God will show himself faithful. Oh, yes, he will. Yes. I love you.
Thank you, God, you've been so good to us. Oh, God, better than we even deserve. Hallelujah. For while we were yet sinners, Lord, you still loved us. You still had mercy upon us, God. And when we call out to you, you say, Oh God. Hallelujah. And you blessed our lives every day since, yeah. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You've protected us. You've been with us, Lord. You've never left us and you've never forsaken us. Yes. God, we can hear your voice, that still small voice, Lord, when we're troubled and we need direction. Oh God, you are everything to us. Yes. You're everything to us. challenges have been outward toward one another this being Sunday we want just to let our challenge be to show you Lord yes. how much I love yes. you and how yes. thankful oh, and how grateful I am Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. thank you Lord Jesus. we are so Hallelujah. excited this morning to have Brother Charlie come and deliver the word for us today I know the Lord has been putting some things on his heart Yes. and I'm excited. I keep up with his blogs and read his blogs and read his posts and things he does on Facebook and I'm always blessed. Yes, it does. Always enjoys me, yes. always lifts me up. Yes. Be food for my soul. And yes. I know that today is not going to be any exception. So while I'm thinking about it, right before I turn the service over to him, we will not be having service Wednesday night because of it being the first Wednesday night. And I suppose you guys are having your meeting, right? Okay, so the Legion will be having their monthly meeting. So we will not be having service this Wednesday night. And I'll be sending texts out to remind everybody. But Charlie, come and take your liberty, everyone. Yes, mighty God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This gets too, too loud. Just tell me and I'll kind of back it off a little bit. I don't think it's on. Right now. Is that on now? No. On now? No. Uh, I'm, not technically, I'm not technologically advanced. Well, good morning. It's good to have you in the house of God this morning. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 12, and we're going to start at verse 5. And the subject this morning is the power of a praying church. Amen? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Because, you know, one thing I've realized throughout all of life is that the only reason why any of us is here is because of prayer. Yes. I can think of a time in my life to where I wasn't such a desirable person to be in church. Amen? And some of us all, we wasn't in that good a shape to be at the house of God. But it seemed like somebody had been praying for me. Amen. Amen? Yes. And that's the whole part of what I want to bring out today is the church has power. Yes. But it's not in your own might. The church has power in prayer. Yes. See, if we go to the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 5, and we're going to start <laughs> right there, it says, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. 
But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Yes. It says, And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Yes. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they come unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. In verse 12 is key. It says, And when he had considered many things, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father God, I thank you for this day, Lord, and this opportunity to come before you, Lord, and to preach your word. And what I ask today that I begin to sit back and let the preacher come and the teacher come, Father. Let the Holy yes. Ghost begin to move yes. in this place. Yes. And Lord, let it begin to strengthen every single person in here. Lord, show us how to put the flesh to the side and begin to walk in the yes. Spirit, Father. Lord, show us how to get rid of these things that's in our mind and begin to move yes. forward with the things that God yes. has for us. Hallelujah. And we pray these things in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Yes. See, the thing is, the power of a prayer church is a church that goes into prayer for its people. You know, I noticed a lot while I was pastor, and sometimes what a lot of people did was they talked more about people than they ever did praying for. Yes, amen. You see, the thing is about church is somehow we got to get into one mind and one accord and begin to put our things on the focus yes. of the things of God. See, I want to say, Peter, he was sitting in that jail cell and he was beginning to think about Jesus Christ. He was probably thinking about the yes. times that he had walked right beside yes. him. He was probably thinking about when he was there mending his nets and Christ began to walk across and say, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. Yes. He began to think about all the great experiences he had with God. He began to think about life. Yes. And then all of a sudden, an angel comes in and smacks him on his side and says, get up. Yes. It's time to get out of here. That's what a lot of us need in the church yes. today. Yes. It's for people to be praying for us. Yes. And then all of a sudden when people start praying for you, then the angel comes by and says, guess what? It's time for a change. Yes. It's Amen. time for something yes. different. You yes. know, I've heard people say all the time, they would say, we need to go back to the old ways and we need to do things. No, we need to go back to God's way. Yes. We need to go back to praying for people. Yes. That is the power of a praying church. Yes. When the church has power, chains yes. are broken. Yes. 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 You know, I can go back in my mind almost 20, I'm going to say 22 years. You probably don't even remember it. But we came to visit your church and you spoke on that night how to be a giant killer. You remember that? That's been a long time ago, but it came to my mind the other day because that's what we're doing. Yes. yes. You have to realize, church, the reason you have to be a praying church is because the enemy mm -hmm. always has people on the battlefield. Yes. The enemy is always sowing seeds of hate yes. and discord. Yes. The enemy is always putting things in our mm -hmm. mind. Tell me this morning I'm not the only one that woke up and said, I know you got off work at midnight last night, but let me tell you, you could probably just sleep a few more, a few more 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I was running out of time. I was thinking, I gotta get up, I gotta get up. But let me tell you, the enemy. He puts things in there for a reason. That's right. Amen. 
to discourage you, yes. to destroy you. Yes. He is the father of all lies. Yes. You might not see everything that he's doing, but when I see the enemy, what I see is a man sowing seed. And he's not sowing good seed, he's just sowing thorns out. Yes. And he's yes. saying when these things come up, all of a sudden it's going to choke out God's people. Yes. He's continuously looking for a way mm. to destroy you. Yes. Right. Yes. Continuously. Yes. But let me tell you, the power of a praying church overcomes Amen. thorns. This yes. Amen. The yes. power of a praying church unlocks the chains. Yes, yes it does. does. Let me tell you that all the way around Peter, I promise you there were soldiers. And the angel tells him to get up. Yes. Let's walk on out of here. And as they begin to walk out, you know, Peter's kind of in a, in a whole other world. He's thinking, where am I at? Where am I going? But all he could see is what, what was forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. Church, we got to get to where we can see what's forward. Yes. Sometimes we see what's to the side and it throws yes. us off. Right. I've walked off many times to the right hand side because I've seen something that kind of, I guess you say, I saw a balloon and had to go find out what was going on over there. <laughs> but then you see the balloon on the left hand side and God kind of reminds you, he'll smite you on the side and mm -hmm. say, let's get back to what's yes. going on. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So the power of a praying church is to get rid of the enemy's plan. Yes. Did you know God has a plan for your life? Yes, he does. He has such a plan that there is somebody else waiting to destroy it. That's right. Mm -hmm. You cannot focus on everybody else in God's will. Amen. Right. You have to focus on God's will for, for you. That's right. And then everything else will fall into place. I see it as a, as a big picture. Yes. Yes. And you know, we are in that picture and God's the artist. I would never tell the artist he don't know what he's doing. And you know, I had somebody tell me not too long ago, they said, well, if God's so good, why did my wife die of cancer? Mm. I've heard people say, if God's so good, why is there starving children everywhere? Yes. I've heard people say, you know, anything that they can think of to try to debunk what's in here. Yes. Where did Cain's wife come from? Y'all, the answers are there. The praying church is the seeking church. Yes. The praying church begins to get in the word of God and look to see the answers. Yes. yes. Because we have an answer for sin. Yes. We have an answer for life. Yes. We have an answer for everything. But the whole thing is sometimes we get into our own lives. Mm -hmm. Come on. And we lose it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Church, we no longer live to survive. Yes. We live for comfort. Amen. You know, I'll share this little brief testimony about two or three weeks ago. Well, almost about a month and a half ago, we had put in for rental assistance through all the coronavirus stuff because of me missing pay. And because the people that own our place couldn't prove the ownership, they kicked it back. Mm. And then energy... I was thinking, I told Esther, I said, I probably need to call Energy and find out, you know, because the bill hadn't been paid, what's going to happen? I called Energy. And Energy said, we're going to shut you off in the morning mm -hmm. unless you got $658. Y'all, Energy's not afraid to shut people off. That's right. right. I began to pray and just ask God on my way to work. I had been going, we were fixing, get ready to start preaching over at the assemblies. And I knew what the enemy was doing. The enemy said, I don't know why you're going down there. You don't have your whole house in order. Look at you. You're a mess. Well, yeah. You're a mess. Yeah. And I began to just pray. And I, here's what I said. I said, God, from this point forward, I've tried to figure everything out. I've tried to lay things in order. And they never turn out the way that I actually try to plan them. Yeah. And I said, there's a wood-burning heater out in that shed that we have, and we got some candles, and we're going to survive. When I got to work, I came in through, I was doing my job, I went and got me some locations, and we have a big rotator thing that we set pallets on, and it spins the top. And it just so happened, I decided to take the shortcut through. And I stepped through and caught a hook right on my leg. And had a bruise about this big around on it. it almost wow. seemed like it bruised straight to the bone. Mm. I went inside the office and told them and reported it. My phone went off. Bing! And a cash app lit up. It said $300. I 
I said, wow. It was my cousin. And she said, when you get the money, she said, I don't care how long it takes you to get your finances together. Pay me back. She said, there's $380 more fixing to show up. Praise God. And I began to think yeah. all it took, Brother Rick, was for me to say, Hallelujah. I'm done I'm trying to do this on my own. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because God can do everything. Yes, Did the scriptures not say this morning that he owns the cattle of thousand hills? Yes. Yes. Amen. Does the scriptures not say everything that he would do for you if you would just trust in him? Yes. You know, I began to see that life is not about me. Right. Life is about living in Christ. Yes. See, you can live for Charlie. You can live for Jackie. You can live for Esther. But you've got to learn to set this aside and begin to live for Christ. Yes, yes. amen. Yes. Because what I've noticed is, that, you know, and I've always heard it. My daddy used to tell me, he said, son, you will walk till the day that you die. Yes. But there's not a thing any of us is taking with us. That's right. And let me tell you, you can save it all up. And then the next thing you know, you have an unappreciative kid that's going to throw it right out the window. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But see, God has a plan. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the plan is to have a church that is praying. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. We can't survive without prayer. Mm -hmm. I looked at the empty faces whenever I was preaching at the assemblies. And I noticed that sometimes we get so complacent. Sometimes we just come to church. But what if we got out of just coming to church? Amen. 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 What if we got into more to where if you see sister so-and-so has a problem, let's not come to me and say, sister so and so doing this. What we should do is say, we're going to go to the Lord. Amen. Did you know that the things that you pray about begin to manifest Amen. God in a physical Amen. form? Amen. When you yes. begin to see the work that God is doing, yes. you begin to make a picture of God. Amen. People begin to see God because of the things that they see. And especially when you begin to speak things into existence. Yes. Some people will say, well, I don't see what you're talking about. But once the plan gets there, I had a guy tell me not too long ago at work, he said, I don't know why you're trying that website stuff because it don't work. Let me tell you, since I started the website, I noticed last night, I've never even heard of this, but there's a place called the uh, Isle of Man. I had three views from it last night. I began to start seeking out different avenues of how to reach people. And I began to see the oh, Netherlands. Yeah. I began to see Poland. I began oh, to see yeah. all these other places. And what I noticed is that God has people everywhere. Yes, yes, he does. Not that I didn't know that. But he showed me. Yes. He made it visible to me. Yes. He made God real to me. Oh, because yes. I'm seeking him in a physical yes. form. Yes. How do we fill a church up? By the power of yes. prayer. Amen. How do we overcome the things that Vladimir Putin is doing? Mm. By the Amen. power Amen. of prayer. Amen. How do we do evangelism? By the power of prayer. Because somehow, some way, we are still locked up mm. in the chains, in the prison. Yes. But we're not singing the songs of joy for mm. the angel to come to break us free. Amen. Mm. I'm sure Peter was sitting there thinking the whole time, I know God's going to deliver me. Can I take y'all a few verses before that and tell you that he had already lost? Peter had already lost his friend. That's yeah. what ministry yeah. does. Yeah. Because why would Peter be so worried about Herod? Herod just killed his friend. Yeah. Somebody he had been walking with for a long time and walked with Jesus with. And now he's gone. Because in the ministry, and that's all of us, yes, all yes. of us are ministers. That's right. In the ministry, sometimes we lose some people. That's it. But the gospel has to go forward. Yes. Amen. If you notice all of these things, they came into a house. Here's Peter standing outside the house. And what did he say people was doing in the house? Praying. praying. They was praying. Yes. Today's church might be sitting there saying, I can't believe Peter was so uncautious and got put in prison. Of all things, why would Peter go to prison? Could he not just do one thing right? These people were saying, God deliver Peter. Yes. Because if Harry gets his hands on him, yes. he's on his way out. 
Come on. But God had a plan. That's right. God had such a plan because He knew that through Peter, these things would come to pass and the world began, would just begin to see the gospel. Not only that, he knew that when the Apostle Paul, you, you know, you have to really realize when you read these stories, it's in the book of Acts, the Apostle Paul. He had killed several members yes. of the church. Yes. Why should the church trust him? You know, that's what a lot of people, like in my mind, I've heard people say, why you? Because God's called me. Amen. Not because sometimes, sometimes the truth is, y'all, a lot of times people that preach don't want to all the time. That's right. Because this is a burden. But it's not a burden like you would feel. This is a burden to make sure that people get a gospel that's true. Yes. A gospel that's different. Yes. A gospel that feeds. Yes. A gospel that moves. Yes. yes. Amen. And the number one thing is because when you pray, it wears you down. Yes. Because when the saints of God began to pray, they prayed from something different. Yes. yes. There is a power inside of you that's stronger than any nuclear weapon that the government can come up with. That's right. But you have to learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. I began to seek for the small things. The small things. What some people would call maybe big things, but the small things. Spiritual things. Yes. Yeah. That's just the small, you know, other things will come. But the small things. I began to realize foundations. I heard a pastor give this testimony. He said that he had built a church in Russia, or he was fixing to build a church. And he bought the only land that he could afford. And he went out there and it was full of peat moss. And he said, I can't build a church, God, on peat moss. And he said they dug and they dug and they dug till they finally reached something. Eight foot later, that was in the ground that they could build a church on. Can I tell y'all, God this morning, when you pray, is digging. Yes, He is. For something to build a foundation. Amen. He said they dug and they dug and then they filled it up with rock and filled it up with this and filled it up with rock and filled it up with this until eventually they could have something to put concrete on. And then He said, after they put the concrete down, that there was, it was all covered up. The foundation he worked so hard to build was covered up with carpet. It was covered up with walls. Yes. He said he hated to see it even covered up because it took so much work to build it. Yes. But it was foundational for it to be covered yes. up. We should have a strong foundation this morning built in prayer. Amen. Yes. Built in love. Yes. Built in kindness. Yes. Built in humility. Yes. Built on the things that God has had for us. Yes. See, God's plan is for you to overcome the faults that are in your life because the praying church is a sin-filled church. Mm -hmm. We all are sinners. Mm -hmm. But God don't expect us to stay the same. That's right. Amen. God don't expect you to be the same as you was 20 years ago. I can tell you this from, and this just speaking from my mind, knowing the truth, and Esther can tell you, I was almost to the same person I was 20-something years ago, just six months ago. And God began to speak to my mind a year before that and said, you got to turn this other music off. You've got comfortable. You've got comfortable. You've got comfortable. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar to some yes, of you? Yes. We get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, we stop praying. Yes. We stop seeking. Yes. We stop looking. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And then we wonder why we're in the shape that we're in. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know somebody was praying for me. Yes, amen. Somebody was. Things, hey, things have got bad for us for a little while. I went, and, I went down the first thing I knew how to do when Esther was going through all her trouble. I bought a book called uh, How to Pray for Your Spouse. You know, any kind of thing that I could do to help her. She needed, 
We both needed prayer more than anybody. But we had to step out of church. And I don't know why we went through the things that we did. But I'm starting to see now. Because sometimes all you're thinking about is yourself. Mm -hmm. Did you know it's easy as a pastor to get to where you think of just you? Real easy. And you know what you see? You see the people begin to just fall off. Because they was looking for something and you lost what they was looking for. Do you know the one sheep that left the 99? He just went off on his own. He didn't have nothing to follow. He just went off on his own. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing I've learned about sheep is they'll follow each other right off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So well. I went off on my own. And it's a sad thing that not too many people came to me. But as I was in a car by myself, God came to me. Yes, yeah, amen. Hallelujah. He said, remember who you used to be? Remember who you used to be? Some of you is in that place right now. Remember who you used to be? I need to restore you. Yes, Lord. I need to restore yes, you. Yes, Lord. These, these things, church, are fundamental. I'm thinking like this right now. He said, as Peter, the scriptures say after that, and you can read it for yourself. Peter's knocking on the door. I'm sure that he can hear what's going on behind the door. They're praying. Mm -hmm. A lady opens the door, or not, she didn't really just open the door yet, but she, she's like, Peter's outside. Because sometimes we get so caught up thinking that God can't do things that we forget that God just did it. Yes. Where should Peter be? He should be in prison, locked up, fixing to die. <coughs> you should have been in prison, locked up, fixing to die. But here he is. Yes. God delivered you. Amen. You're here this morning for a purpose. Yes, amen. How, how, how are we going to re how are we going to win Redfield for Jesus? Did you know right now in Arkansas, Redfield is ate up with methamphetamine so bad? You see it on the news all the time. I think almost a year ago, there was almost 70 something people arrested methamphetamines in Redfield and Jefferson. Wow. How do we reach them? We got to reach their needs. Yes. Because, I, you know, as I was preparing for the message last week, or the week before last, what I realized was, is when you reach the needs of people, then you can minister to them. Because in your mind, all you think about is what you need. Mm. But you forget about what you really need. Mm -hmm. You know the only thing we really need in life to live is God. Yes. yes. And he will provide everything else. Yes, he will. Here's Peter locked up. And all he needed was God. Amen. Yes. yes. If you'll stand this morning, I want to ask you a question. What do you need from God? Sometimes people would just say, well, I need God to pay this for me. I need God to uh, get this co-worker that I work with to leave me alone. I need, but I'm talking about what can God do for you that can change you? Because what God does for you that can change you will change others. Yes, Amen. Will, How do we get to a point to where we're so wrapped up in God that it changes other people? How do we get to that point? That's the power of a praying church. Amen. You know, I've said this once before. Donald Trump cannot make America great again. Joe Biden cannot make America great again. But America has to get to a place to where they can pray to make yes. America great. Amen. Yes. And if we're going to move forward in this life, we have to come to a place to where we can trust in God yes. again. Yes. Amen. I remember before my mother had passed away, I think about all these things now, how much I depended on her because she never failed me. And I compare that to God who was in my lowest point. He never failed me. Try. He never failed me.
Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your anointing. And I thank you that you're changing people. It's the only way that we can move forward. Father, as we begin to seek as a nation, everything that happens is for a purpose. And we know that you're fulfilling prophetic things within the Ukraine. Lord, we ask that you be glorified yes. in all things. Yes. Lord, let somebody look up and yes. see the glory of God yes. like Stephen did. Yes. Let people begin to see how powerful you are. Yes. Lord, let people begin to see yes. the God of Israel yes. in a way that they've never seen it before in this time, yes. in this age. Lord, let your anointing yes. begin to pour out. Yes. If you need something from God this morning, there are people that will pray for you. Yes, amen. There are people that will pray for you in a way that will change your life. All you have to do is come. All you have to do is step out. If you're too ashamed to step out, all you got to do is stay right there. And if you just ask God, He will begin to move. Yes, He will turn this over to Brother Rick. I just thank y'all for listening. Amen. 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 Confirmation went forth this morning of what we've been preaching and teaching about the power that we have through prayer. The thing we do on Monday night, we've set aside the time frame between 7 and 8 o'clock to spend however much time you can in prayer. Just as the church prayed and Peter was released. Yes. That same principle applies today. Yes, amen. You may not be able to pray the whole hour, but if you pray 10 minutes, whatever time you can. But together, the body of Christ, yes. calling out the names of those that are in need of healing. Yes. Praying for deliverance, praying for salvation, praying for whatever the needs may be. Yes. There's more power than what we can begin to imagine yes. Amen. at our disposal through the power of prayer. Thank you, Brother Charlie, so much for the word. And I know it blessed my heart and I know it did yours yes. as well. Amen. Keep the love there in mind. Amen. I pray that these are blessing you, that they're helping you, yes. that they're challenging you. Because these are things that we need to be the example for the world to follow. We're dismissed in the name of the Lord. So glad to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today.